Oh, hey, hi. <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, tell you what, you want to come with me on a trip to Oregon? So you might want to ask, why did I take you out of the relative comfort of your home and drag you all the way out to Oregon? Well, you see, this year is the... I'm sitting out here in front of the Women's Forum, Portland Women's Forum Lookout, and it's still dark out. It's uh, Saturday morning, had a good light sleep last night, and I'm about to photograph sunrise along the Columbia River Gorge. Okay, so here's the shot from here. I took it uh, one minute exposure to F4, ISO 400. I experimented with a couple of different exposures. As you can see, it's still too dark to see anything. Um, it's not bad, but I think I'll get a better view down the river from Crown Vista Point. Now that right there, that little bit of lights, that's Crown Vista Point. So that's where I'm headed next, just a couple of miles up the river. Okay, so I've come to Crown House, and I'm taking a shot of it with the moon directly overhead. 60 second exposure. Here's my camera. See how this comes out. Well, I wanted sunrise on the Columbia River Gorge, and it doesn't look promising for that to happen. I was up top by the Vista Point, and uh, <laughs> no way to get down here, so I had to run along the road to get down here because those lights are maddening. They're absolutely insane. Well, that finishes this particular session on the Columbia River Gorge. Sun should have risen by now, and it hasn't, but I've gotten all kinds of interesting angles, so now it's time to have breakfast and move on to the next point. Okay, now it's time for our first waterfall. This is La Torrell Falls. It's the first one on the Columbia River Gorge. It's supposed to be beautiful. So, let's go after it. Oh, look, bridge. Woo! And we're just moseying on down the path there, and oh yeah, there's this thing here. Ha! Look at those basalt columns. Man, that's nuts. Woo-hoo! All right, I'm gonna be shooting this since it's still dark out. I'm gonna try shooting it without an ND filter. I'll probably go to a three-stop ND filter just to freeze the motion, although I'm going to want to take this a couple of different ways. This is really pretty. So here are my exposures for this waterfall. I just had to clean out the lens because it had some spray on it from this beauty. So I'm standing here in the stream. Next up, Bridal Veil Falls. You can see that I'm at 1.3 seconds of exposure to blur the water at F16, ISO 200. Zoomed out all the way to 10 millimeters. Now the reason why is because it's still cloudy out, still early enough that the sun isn't providing enough light to uh, require the use of a neutral density filter. Okay, well it was quite a hike to get here, so it's gonna be quite a hike to get back. And here we are at Joaquina Falls. Boy, they get you close to the waterfall here. Multnomah 
Falls. I get to climb to the top of that and beyond. Multnomah Falls. And that's the point where it goes over the cliff. And after another climb, we have Dutchman Falls. Nicola Falls. No clear place to take a picture of this here. And this is where my trek upwards ends. This has been one of the most grueling hikes I've ever been on. Unrelenting up. Now it's time to head back down. Okay, seriously, that was way too many people. So I skedaddled. I got the heck out of there. I passed by every other waterfall because the parking was wall to wall. There was literally nowhere to park. So I uh, cut my losses, I ran east, got some gas, and then headed south, and now I'm sitting in the Tall Winds Motel. I'm in the Elvis room uh, in the tiny town of Morrow. And I've been spending the last couple of hours recharging batteries, both the camera's batteries and my own, because the hike this morning was fairly grueling, and editing photos from today's shoot. Shortly I'm gonna be heading out to um, the John Day River and Cottonwood Canyon, and I'm gonna get the sunset. It's gonna be another hike, but it is what it is. We have arrived at the John Day River Cottonwood Canyon. <sighs> it's a lovely canyon. It's not too hot out here right now. Although there are some wildlife life forms in the water. Yeah. Alright, so I found my viewpoint for the sunset. And there's even some light clouds in the sky which seem to indicate we might get a reasonable sunset tonight. That would be lovely. Very, very windy. I don't know if this improvised wind muff is doing anything. It's been falling off more than doing anything else. Look, there's my shadow! Woo! Changed my mind. This is my spot. See, there's my camera. That's the proof. This is my spot. I have my 10 to 24 lens on, shooting it wide. Settings as the sun goes down. We do have some clouds. That might make for some nice color, assuming it's not blocked down below. It's a very pretty little river, isn't it? John Day River. Hello, John Day River. Well, it became pretty apparent that the sunset was going to be a complete stinkeroo in Cottonwood Canyon, so I turned around to come back and I'm investigating certain possibilities. I don't think we're going to actually get any color to the sunset, but that's okay. We've got this nifty little wreck over here. Uh, I've already photographed it. Well, the photos are edited, the batteries are charged. Please drive to highlighted route. And apparently I have to drive to the highlighted route. Or out route. Whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, we're headed off to Madras today to scope out the location that we're going to be shooting the eclipse. And uh, it rained last night and um, it looks like it just stopped. It was still raining a little bit when I got my stuff out to the car. I'm um, getting a start around 6.30 in the morning and our destination today is Crater Lake. 
Okay, so this is Campbell Road. What I did not realize is that past that point right over there, it's a private road, it's private property. But this location right here, going down this hill and setting myself up right on this spot. See where my boots are? Right here. That's my view. That is the foreground for my eclipse shot. Now the sun is going to be located somewhere right around there. So for my wide angle shot, I'm going to have to take it in portrait mode to really get the shot. Uh, it's either that or fisheye, and with fisheye, the angle is going to be so wide that the sun will be so small the eclipse really won't even be visible. It's going to be tough enough. Uh, I'll have to practice it during the partial phases, but we'll have to see. This is going to be a great spot, as long as I can park here without being bothered. Now, my actual parking location is right up here. It's almost as I had pictured it when I saw it on Google Maps. This line of rocks right here. Uh, it's a little bit more overgrown than I thought, and this area right here is wet because it just rained. However, in the weeks leading in the week leading up to the eclipse, this should be nice and dry, so I can just park myself right here, facing out, and uh, sleep for the night <laughs> to get the eclipse. So this is my chosen spot right here off of Pelton Dam Road. Now I'm going to check out a couple of other locations further down Pelton Dam Road and see if I have any alternate um, options. So I'm on the way down to Crater Lake and I see a turnoff for Smith Rock. Didn't know about Smith Rock, so I figured, well, let's go to Smith Rock. See what Smith Rock is all about. Some nice volcanic intrusions. They rode it away by the river, so I'm going to take some photos out here. It's a really beautiful park. I'm glad I lucked into it. just love when I have extra time. Okay, I'm done here at Smith Rock. Now it's time to head on to Bend to get some gas, maybe grab some lunch, and then head on down to Crater Lake. Well, I just left my room at Joe's Motel in Fort Klamath, and uh, my little garage <laughs> uh, is actually right uh, opposite the entrance, so actually I'm going to make it into an exit. Time to go to Crater Lake. So here's Crater Lake with Wizard Island out in the middle. They have closed the West Rim Road at night, so I'm going to have to hike this trail first thing in the morning to get out to shoot the sunrise. Looks like there's still a very little snow out there right down on the bottom where the sun just doesn't hit it as much. Uh, it doesn't exist on the other side at all as far as I can see. So we're going to continue around and just take beautiful photos from this location. Huh. <sighs> So the guy at the ranger station said the trail was going to be flat and paved the whole way. It's a one mile in, one mile back kind of scenario. Now, I ask you if that looks flat and paved to you. Whew! It's not bad. I mean, I could do it easy, but in the morning with a flashlight, it's going to be fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. It doesn't put me anywhere near north enough. The sunrise is still gonna be over the other horizon. And so it looks like my only option for tomorrow is to come up here, see if the western road is open. And if it is, just keep going. And if it's closed, then I'll have to go around the east side 
and photograph Alpenglow to the west, which is not my ideal option. <sighs> Crap. Well, I guess I'll just have to wait and see. No one knows how this is going to play out. Well, actually, I will after tomorrow. And you will, too, because you're seeing this after I'm done. Anyway, uh, I'm off to drive clockwise around the rim. The smoke is so dense that it looks like Wizard Island is shrouded in fog, and you can barely see the rest of the caldera. That's all smoke. That is not fog. There are forest fires going on west of here, and the smoke is settling in this valley formed by the caldera. This is where I really want to be to photograph sunrise tomorrow morning. But there's a good chance the road will be closed and the trail is not looking like an option because it's not going to get me where I need to be. Here we are, north part of the rim of Crater Lake. As you can see, you really can't see much of the lake. It becomes a little bit more visible as you get a little closer, but skies are starting to clear up a little bit. Clouds are breaking up increasing our chances we might get a dramatic sunset. I have to head over to the east side. Sunset's at about 8.15 this evening. Sun's still pretty high up, so I have time. Now well, there's something you don't see every day. Jeez. So I took a chance and came down to, uh, what's this called? Sun something viewpoint something. Anyway, uh, you see the smoke is really making a mess of things, but when the sun goes down behind that bank, it should get really interesting. I'm betting a lot on this. I'm thinking maybe it would have been smarter to go to Wizard Island instead, but I think that's what I'm going to do tomorrow morning, is I'll go to where I started today and photograph sunrise from there. Even though I won't get the sun, I'll still get the beautiful view. Uh, this is a really nice uh, little loop trail. Uh, straight up and straight down, uh, about 1.2 miles uh, total. And uh, wow, take a look at that. So there's a low-lying cloud bank that cut the sun off before sunset. Now there's still some decent glow to the clouds, but it's not going to last long. The clouds lower down are already going dark. The mountain has already gotten dark as well as the mountain behind me. So I'm probably not going to be able to hang out here all that much longer. We'll see. difference a night makes. The smoke is completely cleared out. You have total visibility of the lake and the sunrise is garbage. Uh, totally clear skies. We had a little bit of color down over in there a little while ago but even that's gone now. And uh, So I'll hang around here for a little while, catch golden hour. I'll probably end up photographing Wizard Island closer in to get the shadows and the shapes of the sun streaking the shadows of the trees over to the uh, the left. It is the left, right? Yeah, I know my left or my right on oddly numbered days. Uh, so I got out here first thing this morning. Wasn't quite soon enough. Doesn't look like all that much from this shot, although it's pretty. But I got some crazy shots just up the trail. Contrast. Oh my gosh, beautiful, beautiful color. I was just trying to run back this way so I could actually get some foreground in the shot, and I did before the light got a little too strong. We're not quite done with the show yet, but it's getting close. Pretty soon there's not going to be much to shoot on the lake itself, so it'll be time to pack it in and find other places to go. This kind of broken up landscape, this desolate broken up landscape, is what I imagine Stephen King was picturing when he wrote the book The Wastelands. 
Whoo! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, volcanic activity in the distant past, although as far as the age of the Earth is concerned, not all that distant. So, I'm at the uh, northern edge of lava beds, and there are actually tube caves where the lava passed through and emptied out. And uh, we're going to be hiking into some of those caves and taking some creepy photos. So yeah, I'm going to hike this. And uh, this trail will take me up to the top of that. And this is where I hike to. This is the very top of the volcano. And this, of course, is the crater. Yeah. Okay, so here's where I am. And down there is where my car is. Uh, right there. Yeah. All right, time to head back down. Okay, after checking in at the visitor center um, and getting the feet of my tripod sterilized because this uh, tripod was in a mine up in Rosendale, and it could have some sort of contamination that could hurt the bats here. I have decided that I'm going to do the Sentinel Cave. It involves a little bit of a hike into the cave from this end, and then over 3,000 feet under the ground before coming back up again and a quarter mile walk back to the car. I'm going to be setting up some shots here. I'm going to do this cave, and I'm going to do Valentine Cave. Well, here's the lower cave entrance. The inevitable caution sign. If you see any bats leave the area quietly, well, that should be interesting, do not damage formations. Basically, don't be a dick. Huh. It's a little dark in here. Hey, you want to see? Hang on. Yeah. Uh, that's dark. I have th three flashlights with me, plus my phone, if I need a fourth. <laughs> well, let's continue on the trail. Yeah, this is no way safe to record and walk at the same time. Absolutely. So, we'll see if I can get any pictures. It's not easy to compose in here. It's a real bear. So, that was Sentinel. The next one is Valentine. So, after shooting lava beds, I uh, drove down to Weed, California, which is just north of Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta was beautiful, but there was really no place to pull off and take a picture of the way I was going. And I got to the hotel, and that was it for the day. I mean, I was done. Um, had a lot of work to do, editing photos, getting everything put together. Uh, some really great shots of sunset at Crater Lake. Um, I had a feeling they were going to end up being pretty spectacular, and in my humble opinion, uh, they raised the bar for what I have to achieve in the rest of this trip. It's funny, right? One shot can completely change your outlook on, uh, on photography, and for me, that photo is the one of the um, orange skies over Crater Lake. You can barely see the mountain in the distance because of the haze. And you have the trees and the, the, um, the stump in the foreground. And on any other day, it would be a completely mundane shot, but the lighting was just perfect. <laughs> Anyway, so we're heading out and uh, we're going to take our time today. Today's going to be a very leisurely day. The plan is to go north to Oregon Caves and I'm going to try to get my other camera in there with a little platypod. So, you know, no tripods allowed, but a little platypod, you know, shouldn't bother anybody. Um, and then make my way over to the Oregon coast 
and tonight photograph Samuel, Samuel H. Boardman State Park. My, uh, my goal is secret beach for sunset. And then tomorrow morning it's going to be a slow crawl up the coast in the fog. <laughs> a few days of fog in the morning on the Oregon coast. Who, who can't love that? All right, it's time for me to get out of here. Folks, here we are at the Pacific Ocean. Well, yeah, there it is, specifically the Pacific. And uh, there's some gulls on the rock over there. Ah, so the plan is to photograph sunset out here. Now, the skies are pretty clear, so the sunset's not gonna be such of a much, but as it gets uh, darker, I'll be able to really smooth out these waves nicely. And uh, I'm gonna head uh, a little bit further north from here. This is not really all that dramatic for my taste, but you know, we'll work our way north up the coast and see what Mother Nature has for us. So I've been trying to shoot this stupid scene with the waves coming in around that rock, and uh, the water keeps coming up to. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't do it this time, huh? I had to move my position. Anyway, this is really hard. Photographing the waves is really freaking hard. I've got a six-stop neutral density filter on my lens to uh, slow the shutter speed down to about between a quarter and a sixth of a second on this particular angle. Hang on. Ah, that might have done it. That might have done it. Don't know. We'll keep trying. Okay, so I zeroed in on about a tenth of a second as being ideal for capturing motion within waves. I might even try uh, exposures just a little shorter than that to just moderately blur the waves. Anyway, I'm headed down to what's called Secret Beach. Um, there are no markings for it, unlike everything else um, along the Samuel Boardman Corridor. There, there is no marked parking lot for this, but there is a parking lot. I guess that's why it's called Secret Beach. And uh, this is one of the things I've been most looking forward to seeing on this entire trip. So hopefully this hike down, which will result in a hike back up again when we're done, all this down and up, um, will be worth it. Oh, wow. It looks like I got quite a ways to go before I get down. Well, let's keep going. Okay, so this is what I've come to photograph. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty extraordinary. Nice, lovely little cove. I can actually get down to the beach, but it's quite a steep path, so I have to take it slow and careful. And I'm not actually sure I want to go all the way down to the beach, because I may get the best viewpoint from right up here. Uh, since there's no clouds in the sky, I'm not really expecting any kind of color for the sunset, but the red of the sun as it hits the horizon will illuminate the rocks, I'm hoping, with some pretty crazy light. Assuming that they don't just simply shade each other, but we'll see. What about this location, just north of Arch Rock? I think I've actually seen pictures of this before. It's very pretty. I think this is going to look lovely in the fog tomorrow morning, so I'm definitely going to be coming back here. Also, it doesn't require a walk straight up. Well, I might walk a little ways just to see what I can see. Not a lot of uh, <clears throat> places that you can actually get right down to the coast here. As you can see, it's a pretty steep drop off the cliff which used to extend out here until this all got worn away. Little by little, the ocean eats it away, eats it away. This is at the Arch Rock viewpoint. Arch Rock is right, well, right there, sort of. There's a better view, and as the sun gets lower, I'm gonna move over there. 
So here's my chosen location for the sunset and uh, there's very little color to the sunset actually. It's yellow orange. I'm hoping that it's just about to touch the horizon that it reddens just as it goes down. But uh, very disappointing sunset. But you know again <laughs> you just have to make the most of what you've got. As soon as this is done I'm going to head over there and photograph that from the top parking area over there uh, for blue hour. It looks like there's some fog rolling in. That's cool. So that will definitely make for some interesting shots. Blue hour on the coast looks a little different than blue hour at home. Oh, it's just my camera. Well. Another day comes to an end. Not as productive a day, but not bad. Well, good morning. Here we are at Lone Ranch Beach. There is very little to no fog this morning. There's very little color in the sky this morning. But I'm practicing some wave photography. And uh, right now I have a six stop neutral density filter on. I'm trying to get about a six second exposure. But it, uh, with the advance of sunlight, of course, I have to keep um, getting shorter and shorter exposures. So at some point, I'm going to have to slap the 10 stop neutral density filter on and here comes a reasonable wave now. See what I'm trying to do is blur the motion of all of that. Oh this is a good one right? Yeah, Not as much. Tide is going out. It's gone out quite a bit even since I've been here and I've only been here about maybe 15 minutes. I'm going to take my time going up the coast today. So I have the 10 stop neutral density filter on and I'm doing a two minute exposure. They might want to say why the heck are you doing a two minute exposure? Because I'm going to turn this into glass and fog. It's going to be creepy looking but cool. Really nice light on the water right now. For those of you who have read The Dark Tower, I uh, mean the drawing of the three, the second book in the series. This reminds me of the beach that Roland crawled his way along before finding the third and final door where the mountains come down and meet the sea. Having finished, we've now moved on to Myers Beach South. We're actually headed north. It's a lovely day. Not a cloud in the sky, which is not so good for photography. So I'm out here on the beach in Bandon. The tide is coming in. I was out here last night and completely forgot to record. 
<laughs> I was so engrossed in what I was doing. I was trying to capture the sunset between those rocks out there. Now, I'm not going for freezing the wave motion, so I have a 10-stop neutral density filter on the front of this thing so that I can get 30, 40, even up to 60-second exposures through this to get just crazy freeze the motion. Not, no, I'm sorry, not freeze. So I can get crazy glassy, jagged landscapes. Not quite as dramatic as yesterday, but I'll take it. lost the lens hood. Probably fell out of my pocket about an hour and a half ago and the waves have already taken it. Oh well. Oh, I guess that's a wizard hat also. The place is just lousy with wizard hats, I guess. I feel like it's going into Slytherin right now. I hate losing gear. I mean, I can replace a lens hood, but not immediately. It's not like I'm at home and I can order it from B&H and it'll be there the next day. That's aggravating. Man, that is just, ah, aggravating. Well, I'm done for the morning. Not because I lost my lens hood, but because the light's too bad. <laughs> ah! Of all the dumb luck, somebody found it on the beach came down told me that it had been left on a rock. I went up and down this beach. I walked past this rock. I can't tell you how many times. There it is. My lens cap. Whew! Okay. Photos have been edited. Lunch. I mean, breakfast has been had. Lunch. Well, it's almost nine o'clock. It's time to abandon Bandon and head north. So after a brief detour at the Umpqua Lighthouse for a tour of the lighthouse, I have ended up here at one of the long stretches of beach in western Oregon known as the Oregon Dunes. These dunes are covered by these tall grasses, but these are dunes all the same. When I was a kid, I remember hiking over actual sand dunes, but interestingly enough, just walking on this sand right here is causing my hips no end of grief. Then again, my hips are no longer only 16 years old. They're substantially older than that. Waterproof boots, waterproof boots. Yeah, so I have to walk up this thing and then down the other side to get back to my car. Maybe I'll just stay here tonight. Walking up a hill of sand is kind of like the historic progress of social and civil rights in the United States. One foot forward, half a step back. One foot forward, half a step back, taking you much longer to get where you should have been all along and having to expend an awful lot of energy and injury along the way to get there. <sighs> oh, 
I've also found that it's nearly impossible to walk loudly in sand. No matter what you might do, the sand will distribute out the energy of your footsteps in a million little ways and muffle the sound so that it's just a whisper in a thunderstorm. Well, that's the Hesita headlight. I, uh, I did go down there, packed with people, and the tide had come into the point where you really can't get a great angle on the lighthouse, but fortunately there are these viewpoints on the road up. So now it's time to go to the hotel. Well, here it is, Thor's Well. Incredible wind is bringing waves much higher than you would normally expect for this tide. High tide is not for several hours. And yet we're still getting the spouting action. I've already gotten a whole bunch of really amazing shots. I'm going to change up my angle. The great thing about it is you don't have to really get that close to it. back to shooting it. went back out to photograph the uh, Thor's Well. I got a great shot of Thor's Well. I tripped and fell, not at Thor's Well, and I tore open my knee, so I drove to the emergency room and they patched me up and sent me on my way. Uh, this morning I stopped off at um, Seal Rock, but there was no seals, but I did get some pictures of some birds. And now I am at the Yaquina Head Lighthouse. Let's see if we get the lighthouse in the shot. Yeah, there's the lighthouse right there. Pretty lighthouse. Uh, fog bank on the horizon, not a cloud in the sky otherwise. 10 stop neutral density filter in place, waiting for an opportunity to get a 30 second exposure to blur the water in the front of this rock as well as behind to the other rock. The Cape Mears Lighthouse. So way out there is the Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. That's what it looks like out there. Now this is what it looks like through my camera. Get a little bit closer. Now I'm going to wait for the light to go down just a little bit more. We do have these clouds. Come on, balance out. There you go. We have these clouds that might put a damper on things, especially where sunset is concerned, but all we can do is give it a shot. Okay, so this happened. <laughs> I left early this morning to go up to the Ho Rainforest. The guy was 15 minutes late coming out to uh, give me my bill. And uh, 
I'm driving up north. I'm about to turn onto the Astoria Bridge. That's the Astoria Bridge. I was literally two tenths of a mile down the road, stopped at a stoplight. The guy in front of me in an SUV uh, decided. Well, I've been doing a little bit of hiking and a little bit of shooting, and here I am, ended up at Mount St. Helens. You can see the crater that was left behind when the thing went kerblooey 27 years ago. 37 years ago. 37 years, it's crazy. And uh, there's that lava dome that's in the middle of it, and the peak is above cloud level. I uh, double-checked photo pills now that I'm here, and the Milky Way will not be in a prime position to photograph this. So I'm going to photograph sunset, and I'm going to get the heck out of here. It's so beautiful, it doesn't even look real. Wow, that's gorgeous. The way the clouds are playing off of it. I'm hoping when sun goes down, it turns this whole thing a gorgeous red color. I've hiked down the trail quite a way. I came from up there or somewhere. It's actually hard walking down with the knee the way it is, but it's a lot easier walking up, weirdly enough. I'm not going to walk too much further because I don't want to be caught out here when sunset hits. I want to be within easy striking distance of the parking lot. I'm not staying to do Milky Way. I, I double checked and triple checked and now I'm about a month or two too late to really get it dramatic. Right now it's standing up straight and the center is somewhere over there and it's going to kind of stand up like that and it's completely out of the shot so not even going to take it Okay, July 20th, I checked into my hotel room, grabbed the linens and the pillow, there's the pillow back there, yeah, there it is, and uh, the towel, I'm uh, sorry, the, uh, the blanket, and uh, took a shower, I did laundry, I get everything packed back into my car, and now I'm headed off to Madras. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm hoping I'll get there by eight. Um, my chosen location, yeah. Uh, Google Street says that, uh, Google Maps rather says that uh, the road that I'm planning on hanging on, uh, hanging out on, well, just off of, is closed after a certain point. And I hope I can get down to where I need to get down to, because I really do not want to have to go into Madras. It's going to be a Madras madhouse. So it's off to get gas, and it's off to the Eclipse location, and to sleep in my car for the first time since 1993. You do what you gotta do. Bye. Okay, so I got into uh, my designated spot on Northwest Campbell Road, just north of Madras, and I pulled off the side of the road and I met this young man from California in a van. And we were talking for a few minutes. We were gonna just stay pulled off the road when the owner of the property was coming home and he stopped and we talked with him and he invited us to stay on his land. He's actually set up just this large area here for people he knows and even some he doesn't know, including me, to, uh, to stay and sit, sit and watch the eclipse. And the best part about it is we are right on the center line here. We are right in the center of the totality. And just down the road, he has a barn. And this barn is positioned perfectly to be in the shot. It's going to be incredible. Uh, I'm going to sleep in my car tonight. I took the pillow from the hotel as well as the blanket from the hotel. And uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to go and get set up. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> Quarter to five in the morning on August 21st, 2017. 
I spent the entire night sleeping in my car with this flimsy little blanket. It's so cold. But I did manage to sleep. I parked the car on a bit of an incline so that the front of the car is a little higher than the back of the car. And that put me in a more natural sleeping position <laughs> for the night. It is completely clear outside. I woke up in the middle of the night. The stars were brilliant. Um, doesn't even look like there's any haze outside. Clarity of the air is exquisite. We're four and a half hours from totality at this point. It gives me time to get everything set up and ready to rock and roll. Plenty of time. Although first I think I need to go down and use their Johnny on the spot that they've got set up. It's incredible the work that these people have done to get this ready for other people to observe this eclipse. But it looks like we're ready. This is it. The first light of day on the cliffs just to the north of me here. The first light of a day I've waited for my entire life. There's a smoky haze in the air, but the sun is still visible and we should still be able to get a good view of the eclipse from here. It uh, looks like it's even overspreaded to the north, so there's really no getting away from it. Hard to tell, but it looks a little clearer to the west where it's going to be coming in from. The rig is all set up. I got this camera with the telephoto and I've got this camera wide angle. The composition is already set on this. Uh, assuming the sun is going to be where I hope the sun is going to be, which is going to be somewhere over there, uh, putting it up in the corner. So it should be very exquisite. And uh, we're all going to meet in front of their house momentarily for a group picture, so I'm going to head over there now. And the first little bite has been taken out of the sun. 19 minutes to totality. 19 minutes. The quality of the light has already changed. It's definitely darker. The temperature has dropped just a little bit. The world is starting to get weird. Okay, there's about seven minutes to go to totality. The quality of the light in the air is definitely bizarre. The temperature has dropped. That's my alarm to change my settings, which I have already done. Let me just test my bracketing while I have time. Ah, <laughs> I didn't have it set to bracket. Now I have it set to bracket. Diamond ring approaching. Wow. All right, we're gonna adjust this so that it's here. Whoa! Whoa ho ho! Oh! Holy crap! Venus, where are you, Regulus? Who cares? Oh my god. Oh my god. Prominences? Holy crap, prominences! about 30%. 
30 minutes after twilight. Absolutely. Yep, diamond ring! Huh. Oh my god, that was insane. Thank you. 